Have you ever pondered upon the mysterious ways through which God seeks to connect with us? In our journey through life, amidst the tumult and the tranquility, there are subtle yet profound signals that the Creator dispatches, inviting us into a deeper communion. Tonight I want to explore with you eight signs that signify God's desire to connect with us, each one illuminated by the divine wisdom of the scriptures. But before this, like this video and subscribe this channel for more video. I am sure these videos will inspire you. Have you ever found yourself enveloped in a situation so chaotic, so tumultuous, that it seemed there could be no escape, no solace to be found? Yet, in that whirlwind of disorder, you suddenly experienced a peace so profound, so inexplicable, that it defied all human understanding. Tonight I want to delve deep into this mysterious phenomenon, the first sign that God is reaching out to connect with us, the unexplained peace in chaos. This divine peace, my friends, is not merely a cessation of turmoil, but a sacred assurance that emanates directly from the heart of God. It serves as a beacon of hope, a testament to the presence of the Almighty in our lives, even when our circumstances suggest otherwise. The scripture encapsulates this beautifully in Philippians 4, 7, which states, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This verse doesn't just speak to peace as an abstract concept. It speaks of a protective, encompassing peace that stands as a sentinel over our hearts and minds, shepherding us through the darkest valleys. But how does one experience this peace? It begins with surrender, a letting go of our human inclination to control and decipher every aspect of our lives. It's in the act of surrender that we open the channels of our hearts to receive God's peace. This peace is a gift freely offered, but it requires us to be receivers, to have the humility to acknowledge that some situations are beyond our mortal ability to resolve. Moreover, this peace is a sign of God's profound love for us. In John 14, 27, Jesus tells his disciples, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Here, Christ distinguishes the peace he offers from any peace the world can provide. The world offers temporary reprieves, fleeting moments of tranquility that dissipate at the slightest sign of trouble. In contrast, the peace of God is enduring, transcending the fluctuating circumstances of our earthly existence. This divine peace also serves as a compass, guiding us back to God's presence. In moments of chaos, when we feel lost and overwhelmed, the peace that surpasses understanding leads us home to the sanctuary of God's embrace. It reminds us that, regardless of the storms that rage around us, we have an unshakable refuge, an eternal source of calm. We venture further into the divine realm, exploring the second sign that God is earnestly seeking to connect with us, the presence of recurrent themes in our lives. The scriptures offer profound insights into this divine communication method. In Jeremiah 29, 11, the Lord declares, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. This promise is a cornerstone of faith, reminding us that God has a master plan for each of our lives, a blueprint filled with hope and prosperity. The recurring themes we encounter are breadcrumbs leading us on the path to discover this plan, urging us to align our steps with God's greater purpose. Why does God communicate this way? It is because He desires a relationship with us that is active and responsive. He wants us to be seekers, to look for His handiwork in the tapestry of our lives. When we begin to notice and respond to these patterns, we engage in a dynamic conversation with the Creator, one that transcends words and enters the realm of the Spirit. Consider the story of Moses and the burning bush in Exodus 3. Here, God uses a miraculous sight, a bush ablaze yet not consumed, to capture Moses' attention. This recurrent theme of God speaking through the extraordinary and the everyday invites us to be vigilant, to keep our eyes open for the burning bushes in our own lives, 
those repeating signals that beckon us closer to God's presence. But how do we respond to these themes? First and foremost, with prayer. Prayer is the language of our relationship with God, a dialogue that nurtures our connection with Him. When we encounter these recurring themes, we should bring them before God in prayer, seeking understanding and direction. Additionally, we must immerse ourselves in the Scriptures, for they are the lens through which we can discern the meaning and purpose behind these divine patterns. Moreover, these recurrent themes often encourage us to take action, to make changes in our lives that align with God's will. They challenge us to step out in faith, to break from the routine and embrace the extraordinary journey God has planned for us. This journey is not always easy. It requires courage, trust and a willingness to let go of our preconceived notions of what our lives should look like. But in doing so, we open ourselves to the fullness of life that God promises. As we journey deeper into the understanding of how God seeks to connect with us, let us turn our attention to the third sign, a strong urge to pray. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, 18, we find a call to a life of ceaseless prayer. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. This passage does not suggest a life interrupted by prayer, but a life intertwined with prayer. The strong urge to pray, especially at unexpected moments, serves as a reminder that God desires not just occasional check-ins, but a continuous, ongoing conversation with us. But why does this urge strike us so strongly, and why at times when we least expect it? It's because God knows our hearts and our circumstances better than we do ourselves. He sees the struggles we face and the burdens we carry. When He nudges us towards prayer, it's because He wants to offer us His strength, His guidance, and His peace. It's as if God is saying, Come to me, share with me, let me carry this for you. Consider the example of Jesus Himself, who often withdrew to lonely places to pray. Luke 5, 16. If the Son of God, in all His divinity, felt the need for such intimate conversations with the Father, how much more do we, in our humanity, need these moments of divine communion? The urge to pray is a privilege, an opportunity to draw wisdom, strength and comfort directly from the source of all life. Moreover, this strong urge to pray can also be a call to intercession on behalf of others. Sometimes we are moved to pray for people or situations that we haven't thought about in years. This is not happenstance. It is God laying a burden on our hearts, inviting us to participate in His divine work through the power of prayer. In doing so, we become vessels of His grace, channels through which His love and healing can flow into the lives of others. So, what should we do when we feel this divine nudge to pray? Firstly, we should respond immediately, not putting off this sacred invitation for a more convenient time. God calls us in the moment because it is the right moment. Secondly, we should pray earnestly, pouring out our hearts to God with honesty and trust. And finally, we should be open, open to hearing God's voice, open to receiving His guidance, and open to being changed by the power of His presence. As we continue our exploration of the signs through which God seeks to connect with us, we turn our focus to the fourth sign, the opening and closing of doors in our lives. This metaphorical expression speaks to the moments when opportunities suddenly emerge or disappear, guiding our steps in ways we could not have anticipated. It is a profound reminder that God is actively involved in the direction of our lives, orchestrating events and decisions to lead us to where we need to be. In the book of Revelation, we find a powerful promise in chapter 3, verse 8. I know your works. Behold, I have set before you an open door, which no one is able to shut. This passage underscores the sovereignty of God in opening pathways no human effort can unlock, and in closing doors to protect us from paths not meant for us. The opening and closing of doors serve as divine markers, guiding us through the maze of life with the wisdom and timing only God possesses. 
But how do we discern these openings and closings as acts of God? First, by recognizing that God's plans for us are always for our good, to prosper us and not to harm us, to give us hope and a future, as declared in Jeremiah 29, 11. When doors open or close, it is a part of God's intricate plan to bring about His best for our lives. It requires faith to walk through an open door, just as it requires faith to accept a closed one, trusting that God's ways are higher than our ways and His thoughts than our thoughts. Isaiah 55, 9. Furthermore, these moments often come with a sense of peace or conviction, confirming that God is indeed leading us. The peace that comes from God surpasses all understanding and guards our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 7. Even when the way forward is unknown, this peace can assure us that we are in God's will, following His lead. However, the opening and closing of doors are not only about external opportunities, but also about the opening and closing of doors within our hearts. God often works within us to prepare us for what's to come, closing the door on certain desires, attitudes or habits that hinder our spiritual growth, and opening our hearts to new ways of thinking, serving and loving. So, what should our response be to this divine guidance? First and foremost, we must cultivate a relationship with God through prayer and the study of His Word, which sharpens our ability to discern His leading. We must also be willing to step out in faith, embracing the open doors with courage and accepting the closed doors with grace, knowing that each step taken in faith brings us closer to God's ultimate purpose for our lives. As we delve further into the ways God reaches out to connect with us, we encounter the fifth sign, unexpected help during trials. Life as we know it is a tapestry of highs and lows, moments of joy seamlessly woven with times of challenge. Yet, it is in the midst of our trials, when we feel most alone and overwhelmed, that God's presence can manifest most powerfully through the help of others. The scriptures provide comfort and assurance, especially in times of need. Psalm 46, one tells us, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. This verse isn't merely poetic, it's a declaration of God's unwavering support for us, especially when the going gets tough. The unexpected assistance we receive, be it a kind word, a helping hand or a timely resource, is not random luck. It is God at work employing human agents to deliver His grace and provision. This divine orchestration serves multiple purposes. Firstly, it reminds us that we are not alone. Our struggles are seen and known by a compassionate God who cares deeply about our pain and seeks to alleviate it. Secondly, it provides tangible evidence of God's love and concern for us, reinforcing our faith and trust in His provision. And finally, it fosters a sense of community and interconnectedness among us as we become instruments of God's love to one another. Consider the story of Elijah and the widow of Zarephath in 1 Kings 17. In a time of severe drought and famine, God directed Elijah to a widow who would provide for him. This widow, despite facing her own dire circumstances, received unexpected provision from God, not only for herself and her son, but also for Elijah. This account illustrates how God connects us in our need, providing unexpectedly through one another in ways that affirm His care and provision. So, how should we respond to unexpected help in times of trial? Firstly, with gratitude. Recognizing God's hand in the assistance we receive cultivates a heart of thankfulness, not just towards the people He uses, but towards God Himself. Secondly, with humility. Accepting help requires acknowledging our own vulnerability and need, which can be a humbling experience but one that draws us closer to God. And finally, with a willingness to be God's instrument for others. Just as we have received, so too are we called to give, to be the unexpected help in someone else's trial, reflecting God's love and compassion. As we journey through the signs of God's desire to connect with us, we arrive at a profound and often challenging aspect of our relationship with the divine, the conviction of sin. 
The sixth sign we explore tonight is not one that brings comfort in the conventional sense, but rather it is a transformative discomfort that leads us to a deeper understanding of God's holiness and our need for His grace. The scriptures are clear on the matter of sin and the importance of repentance. In Acts 3.19, we are encouraged to repent therefore and turn back that your sins may be blotted out. This verse is a powerful reminder of the loving invitation from God to turn away from our wrongdoings and towards a path of healing and restoration. The conviction of sin is a sign that God is actively working in our lives, nudging us towards repentance and a more profound spiritual renewal. This divine discomfort is not to be mistaken for condemnation. Romans 8, 1 assures us, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. The conviction we feel is not meant to push us away in shame, but to draw us closer in a spirit of repentance. It's God's way of saying, my child, there is a better way, a way that leads to life, peace, and true fulfillment. But why does God bring our sins to light? It is because He desires not just to connect with us superficially, but deeply and authentically. Sin creates a barrier between us and God, and by His Holy Spirit, He convicts us to acknowledge these barriers, not to leave us in despair, but to lead us to the cross where mercy and forgiveness abound. It's in recognizing our sinfulness that we can truly appreciate the depth of God's love and grace towards us. James 4, 8 offers us a beautiful promise. Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. The conviction of sin is an invitation to draw nearer to God to experience the cleansing and purifying only He can provide. It's a call to leave behind what hinders our spiritual journey and embrace the abundant life that comes from walking in obedience and surrender to God's will. How then should we respond to this conviction? Firstly, with a heart of repentance. This means not just feeling sorry for our actions, but making a conscious decision to turn away from sin and towards God. Secondly, by seeking God's forgiveness, which He freely offers to all who come to Him with a contrite heart. And finally, by embracing the grace of God, allowing it to transform us from the inside out, so that we can live lives that reflect His love and holiness. As we journey together through the indicators of God's yearning for connection with us, we arrive at the seventh sign, a desire for spiritual growth. This burning aspiration to deepen our understanding of God, to grow in faith, and to live out His teachings more fully, is a clear beacon of His presence and action in our lives. 1. Peter 2. 2 instructs us with profound simplicity. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation. This scripture speaks to the innate hunger within us for spiritual nourishment, a hunger that can only be satisfied by the Word of God and a closer relationship with Him. When we feel an insatiable desire to delve deeper into Scripture, to spend more time in prayer, and to engage more actively in our faith community, it is God Himself stirring our spirits, inviting us to draw nearer to Him. This desire for spiritual growth is an invitation to embark on a journey of transformation, it is God calling us to not only be hearers of His Word, but doers also, to live out the teachings of Christ in our everyday lives. This path of spiritual maturity is marked by an increasing sensitivity to the things of God, a deeper love for others, and a more profound sense of peace and purpose in our lives. Why does God instill in us this longing for spiritual growth? It is because He desires for us to experience the fullness of life that comes from a close relationship with Him. John 10.10 10 tells us, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. God's intention for us is not merely to exist, but to thrive, to live lives rich in love, joy, peace, and all the fruits of the Spirit. Furthermore, as we grow spiritually, we become more equipped to serve as lights in the world, reflecting the love and truth of God to those around us. 
Matthew 5.16 encourages us, in the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Our spiritual growth, therefore, is not just for our own benefit, but for the edification of the church and the world. So, how do we respond to this divine stirring towards spiritual growth? Firstly, by immersing ourselves in God's word, for it is the primary means by which he speaks to us and transforms us. Secondly, by dedicating time for prayer and meditation, creating space in our lives to listen to God's voice and discern his will. And finally, by actively participating in the life of the church, serving others, and sharing the good news of the gospel, for in doing so, we not only grow ourselves, but also contribute to the growth of others. As we conclude our exploration of the signs through which God reaches out to connect with us, we turn our gaze to the eighth and final sign, encounters with creation. Have you ever stood in awe of a sunrise, marveled at the intricate design of a flower, or felt a deep sense of peace, listening to the ocean waves? These moments, my friends, are not mere coincidences or simple pleasures. They are divine encounters, where the Creator speaks to us through the majesty and beauty of the natural world. Romans 1.20 reveals to us, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that people are without excuse. Through the intricacies of creation, God communicates His power, His creativity, and His love for us. Each encounter with the natural world is an invitation to acknowledge His presence and to reflect on our relationship with Him. Why does God choose to connect with us through creation? Because it surrounds us, accessible to all, transcending language, culture, and social status. The beauty of a starry night sky, the serenity of a mountain vista, and the simple elegance of a butterfly are universal languages that speak directly to our hearts, reminding us of the Creator's omnipotence and the careful thought He put into crafting a world that could nurture and inspire us. These encounters with creation serve multiple purposes in our spiritual journey. Firstly, they humble us reminding us of our place in the grand scheme of creation and the vastness of God's power compared to our limited human understanding. Secondly, they inspire worship, moving us to acknowledge the Creator's handiwork and to offer praise and thanksgiving for the beauty and provision found in nature. Lastly, they invite us to stewardship, calling us to care for the earth and all its inhabitants as a reflection of our love for the Creator and our respect for His creation. So how should we respond to these divine encounters with creation? Firstly, by cultivating a sense of awareness and gratitude. Let us not rush through life so preoccupied with our own concerns that we miss the messages God is sending us through the natural world. Secondly, by allowing these moments to draw us into deeper contemplation and connection with God, using them as opportunities for prayer and meditation on His Word and character. And finally, by embracing our role as stewards of the earth, caring for creation as an act of worship and obedience to God. In conclusion, let us not overlook the divine encounters with creation that God graciously provides as signs of His presence and love. Let us embrace these moments with open hearts, allowing them to inspire awe, provoke worship, and deepen our connection with the Creator. In the beauty and majesty of the natural world, let us see the hand of God reaching out to connect with us, inviting us into a deeper relationship with Him. Amen. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, don't forget to show your support by giving it a thumbs up. Liking the video lets me know that you appreciate the content and it helps the video reach more people. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel. Subscribing ensures you won't miss out on future updates, and it's a great way to join our community. Just hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you're always in the loop. Feel free to share this video with your friends, family, or anyone you think might benefit from it.
sharing helps the channel grow and reach a wider audience. Thanks for being part of our community, and I look forward to sharing more content with you. So go ahead, like, share and subscribe, and let's continue this journey together.